and encourage you and build you up on the journey. How many know we're on a journey with God? How many know to be a part of Victory Arch is to be a part not only of a church, but to be a part of a people of power? Amen? And say this with me. Say, we're on a journey. And I'm going to be bringing out some traits, some traits that I believe are going to strengthen every person, man, woman, child, leader, young person, single person on this journey. How many know we, we should seek to get stronger in the things of God? Just look at your neighbor and tell him, I need you to get stronger. I need you to get stronger. I need every person here to get stronger. Proverbs chapter 24 in verse 3, I want to start this little series entitled Traits of the Greats. Traits of the Greats. Proverbs 24, beginning in verse 3. Watch what the Word of God says. It says, through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Verse 5 says, a wise man is strong. I, I want you to say it and get it in your spirit. Say it with me. Say, a wise man is strong. That's good. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. I want to kick off this series entitled Traits of Greats. And I want to bring out the first trait this morning. I want to talk to you about wisdom. I want to talk to you about wisdom. Shake your neighbor's hand. Tell him I'm glad I sat next to you. And go ahead and be seated this morning. Everybody say it real strong. Say wisdom. I want to talk to you about wisdom because according to the scripture, wisdom builds the house and fills the rooms. Wisdom builds the house and fills the rooms. Now, next to knowing Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I think it's important to know that there are some important traits that go along with it that are vital to our Christian success. I think there's nothing more vital to a Christian's success to not only say that they have Jesus, but they must be able to say that they have the ability to walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. I've learned that if you're going to live the life that is the will of God for you, I've learned that if you want to be in the will of God and stay in the will of God, you must understand the main ingredient to doing that is wisdom. Wisdom is the difference between walking a driven life or walking a directed life. Write that down. Wisdom is the difference between walking a driven life or a directed life. Write that down. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what that means. Many people in the church are driven by problems and circumstances. Problems and circumstances and situations have a way of driving you. It's like Pharaoh drove the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. The Pharaoh of problems wants to drive you to its destination. But to be a Christian that walks in wisdom is not to be driven by your problems, but to be directed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Directed by the power, and not only the power of the Holy Spirit, church, I want to tell you the vision of the Holy Spirit. The vision of the Holy Spirit. See, when we talk about wisdom, understand that wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. When you receive Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. What came as an attribute of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Because Jesus said, I'm going to send you a teacher. Mm, come on, somebody. I'm going to send you a coach. I'm going to send you an encourager. I'm going to send you a guide and understand that the guide I'm giving you is full of wisdom. Hey, full of wisdom. So wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. What I believe is this, is that if you want to walk in wisdom, you have to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to give you inside information. 
To have the Holy Spirit, to have the Holy Spirit in your life is to have information that the world does not possess. To have inside information, say inside information. What does that mean? It simply means that the Holy Spirit, through wisdom, wants to show you how to live. He wants to show you how to live. He wants to show you what to do. And when you have the Holy Spirit and you have wisdom in your life, it will even show you what not to do. It'll cause for you to avoid certain problems in your life. Why do some people always find themselves in problems? They don't have any wisdom. Talk to me, church. They don't have any wisdom. Wisdom will teach you what to avoid. So what's the point of this little introduction is that if we acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our decisions. If we acknowledge the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in our decisions, he will lead us to favor and blessing. And I don't know about you, but I'm going into favor and blessing. I'm going out of the wilderness into the promised land. I'm going into God's vision for my life. And in order to get there, I've got to cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Because when you cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he will lead you to favor. He will lead you to blessing. Let's talk about wisdom some more. What is we're going to talk a lot about wisdom this morning. What is Wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what to do when you don't know what to do. Who knows someone right now that doesn't know what to do? They, they're looking to the left. They're looking to the right. They don't know what to do. Well, do you know that even when you don't know what to do, the Holy Spirit will teach you what to do? Wisdom is finding out what to do when you don't know what to do. Let me just put it this day with this way. Wisdom is your cure for confusion. And I came to tell you confusion is not of God. The Bible says that the devil is the author of confusion. Oh, yeah. Who reads their Bible this morning? The devil is the author of confusion. If you're walking in a spirit of confusion, you must be, have been deceived by the enemy. You must have been deceived by the devil. But when you're walking with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom begins to fill your life. And I came to tell you, wisdom is the cure for every confusion, everything that tries to take you out of the will of God, everything that tries to move you from the place God wants you to be. Come on and clap for the Lord. That's good teaching right there. That's good teaching right there. The Bible says many things about wisdom, so that tells us that wisdom is an important quality to possess if you want to experience success in the things of God. Let's look at what the Bible says about wisdom. Follow with me. If you read the Bible, you'll like this part. Proverbs 3, 13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding. The book of Job, chapter 12, verse 12 says, Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? That's encouraging that the older you get, the smarter you get. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Proverbs 15, 12 says mockers resent correction so they avoid the wise. They don't want to be around them. Proverbs 1, 7 says, but fools despise wisdom and understanding. So I want to read Proverbs 4, 5 because this is Solomon really speaking into his spiritual sons and his sons. And he writes two things. He says, get wisdom, get understanding, exclamation point. Get wisdom, exclamation point. Get understanding, exclamation point. He says, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake with her. It says, do not forsake her. Why does the Bible refer to wisdom as her? Because God knows women are smart. It says, don't forsake her and she will preserve you. She will protect you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. That's what I want you to leave with here today is that wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the foundation for success. Wisdom is the foundation for breakthrough. If you're going to lay a foundation in your life, lay Jesus and lay wisdom and everything will be all right. Somebody talk to me in this place. Love her, keep her. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, 
get wisdom, get understanding. Watch this. Exalt her and she will promote you. Exalt wisdom and she will promote you. Watch this. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. Wisdom. Wisdom. That's what some of you need in this place. You've got Jesus, but you need wisdom. You've got the Lord. You've got the spirit. You've got a song. You've got a cute outfit on, but you need some wisdom in your life. And you need to love wisdom and you need to protect wisdom and you need to embrace wisdom. Because if you if you take care of wisdom, wisdom will take care of you. Wisdom will take care of your destiny. Wisdom will bring blessing in your life. Wisdom is mentioned in the Old Testament 185 times. It's mentioned in, in the 13 books of Paul 53 times in the New Testament. Wisdom is the very difference as to why some experience success and some are in constant defeat. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. I'm going to just keep on saying it. Wisdom. See, a fool doesn't want any wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is wealth. Health is wealth. Wisdom is wealth. You want to be rich? Don't get money, get wisdom. Because if you got wisdom, money will show up. Hey. You say, how do I get wisdom? Okay. I may not have wisdom, but how do I get wisdom? Turn with me to the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, it says, in verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If any of you, see, see James is talking to Christians. If any of you lacks wisdom, go to God and get it. See, what this tells me is that if you ask God for wisdom, he will not rebuke you for it. He says he'll give you as much wisdom as you want without reproach. In other words, if you're not wise this morning and you've made a lot of bad decisions in your life and you find yourself in a situation that got you in because of foolishness and you go to God and you ask him for wisdom, he's not going to tell you, you big dummy, here's some wisdom. He's going to rejoice because he says, I'm looking for one of my children that's willing to ask me for the wisdom that they need to get out of the storm. Hmm. What's beautiful about wisdom is that God would not give us something that we cannot attain. He would not offer you something that you cannot attain. The problem is we don't ask for what we need. The problem is the reason we find ourselves in spiritual lack this morning is because we're not asking God for what we need. You, you have the Lord, but you need wisdom. You need understanding. You need to get out of the situation. You need a little bit of wisdom. And what God is saying to you, he's saying, if you want wisdom, you can have it, but you got to reach out and get it. I've offered you wisdom. I've made wisdom available to you. What is the point of this message is that you can walk in greater wisdom. And when you learn to walk in greater wisdom, you will walk in greater stability. If you read the scripture a little bit farther, it says, for let not that man, if he says, ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed by the wind. For not let that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double minded man, unstable in all oh God, you know, the scripture unstable in all his ways. Why are people unstable? Because they refuse to ask God for wisdom. And I believe with all of my heart that if you're going to be the person that God has called you to be, you must attain wisdom in your life. Wisdom will stabilize you. Wisdom will lead you into your future. Whatever your issue is that you're dealing with right now, whatever is going on in your life right now, whatever is causing for you to look at me the way you're looking at me right now. Oh, I could see it. I could discern it. The way you're looking at me, some of you are angry about your situation. You're angry about your marriage. You're angry about your way. You say, man, should I even be in this church? I don't even know if this church is working. No, the church is working, baby. It's just that you ain't got no wisdom. 
And you need to reach out to the word of God and say, Lord, give me some wisdom because wisdom will pull you out of your sickness and wisdom will change your family situation. And if you find yourself in trouble this morning, wisdom, wisdom will cure confusion in your life. Wisdom is going to bring you out. Tell your neighbor wisdom will bring you out. And you can attain it. So let's talk about where to attain the wisdom. Number one, the word of God is wisdom. The word of God is wisdom. Let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Why, why did two men sit under the same word, but only one gets results? Why, why did two women sit under the same word, but only one woman gets results? I'll tell you. Because one man hears the word, but the other man is in relationship with the word. One man hears. As the Bible says, be not just hearers. So why do you have two people sitting next to each other in a church? One's breaking through, one's sad. They're hearing the same words, same words being preached, same words being developed, same, same word, word is being delivered. One is breaking through, one is going backwards because one is hearing, the other one is in relationship with the word that's being preached. Oh, my God. Someone say, go deeper. See, the Greek, the logos word, the written word, and the spoken word is being taught and preached every day in this church. It's being taught in the Bible studies. It's being taught in the recovery home. It's being taught in the Wednesday night youth services, youth services, taught in the Spanish, taught on Sunday morning, taught in the family life. The word of God, the logos word, the written word of God is, be, is written down. It's the logos. It's on the paper. It's being spoken. But I came to tell you the word that changes you is not the written word and the spoken word. It's the rima word, the living word. It's when that word comes into your life and it comes alive for the first time. Some people call it revelation. Some people call it uh, insight. Some people call it illumination. I call it the living word of God that is sharper than two, any two-edged sword that when it cuts you, it cuts you in the place you need to be cut. Come on, somebody. In the place you need to be cut. Somebody say amen. Why does one prosper and one walks in defeat? Because they hear the word, but the other person develops a relationship with the word. And I want to tell you something this morning. There's a difference between the word of God and a word from God. If you come on Sunday morning to hear the word of God, I cannot guarantee that you're going to break through. But if you come to church on Sunday morning looking for a word from God, you're coming in a spirit to get everything that God. Oh, come on, somebody. Get everything that the Lord has for you. See, not everybody will clap on it because you got religious people. You come to church. You want a, with the word of God. Give me the word of God. But the word of God's not changing you. Because you're not allowing the word of God to come alive in your spirit. Come alive in your heart. Don't you know this word could keep you off drugs? Don't you know this word could keep you off the bottle? Don't you know this word could heal your body? Don't you know that there's power in the word of God? God's just looking for somebody that will take it personal and say, your word is not enough. I need a word from heaven. I, oh. I need a Rima word. Someone say Rima word. See, a person who walks is a hearer. But a person who's truly alive in wisdom is a practitioner of the word of God. Ooh, a practitioner. Come on now. You can't really <laughs> talk about something unless you've done it yourself. And that's why you got a lot of Christians in the house of God these days. They want to talk about the things of God, but they ain't even doing the things of God. They're still doing the things of the world. They're still caught up in an old mentality. They want to try to come into the house of God and fake us out. Listen, brothers, you can't fake us out. Sisters, you can't fake us out. We know you're not living it. And we know that's why you're not breaking through. That's why the curse hasn't been broken. That's why the marriage hasn't gotten better. That's why you're still dabbling in sin. And you, and you can't be everything God's called you to be because you're hearing it, but you ain't doing it. Come on, somebody. And what you need is a little bit of wisdom in your life. You need the word of God to bring wisdom. Ooh, I'm preaching fire this morning. Why? Because the word of God will teach you how to live. 
tell your neighbor, the word will teach you how to live. The word will teach you how to live. The word will teach you how to navigate. The word will teach you how to steer this thing called life. You don't always got to be crashing into the island. You don't always have to be crashing into the wall on the freeway. You don't always have to be drunk driving up in here. You can make it. If you understand that the word of God will teach you how to live, the word of God will teach you how to love your spouse the right way. The word of God will teach you how to serve your husband. The word of God will teach you how to handle your money. The word of God will teach you how to deal with life, not only on the mountaintop, but deal with life when you're in the valley. The word of God will teach you how to walk as a single person, holy before the Lord. And the word of God will teach you how to lead effectively in the ministry only if you understand that the word of God is wisdom. Oh, come on and clap. I want you to clap right now. Come on and clap in this place. What does this church need? This church needs leaders with the word from God. We don't need leaders with just book knowledge. We need leaders with a revelation that the word of God can really change a person, that the word of God can really make a difference when it comes alive, Rima in somebody's life. So the word of God is wisdom. How do we attain wisdom? Number two, write this down. We attain wisdom from those who walk as chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. And where do we get the wisdom? We don't get the wisdom from the called. We get the wisdom from the people that are walking it out. The people that are called, they can tell you about it. The people that are chosen can show you how they did it. See, he chose you. And to be chosen is to be fully submitted to the word of God and allow the word of God to do a work in your life. I, I love that song we sang a few weeks ago. Some of you missed it. You were just it being entertained. You were just hearing. I was getting blessed when that Marky and the team came up and said, God is doing a great work. Great work, he's doing a great work in me. See, called people can't sing that. Chosen people can. That means whatever I'm going through is all working for the good. <laughs> See, you can learn and draw wisdom from the chosen because the chosen are not striving against God, they're striving with God. I, I, I get so amazed at how many people, they go for wisdom from people who are fighting God. <laughs> and then we wonder why we don't win. And if you want to get true wisdom, and you want to really get to the place God's called you to be, look for the ones that are striving with God. Look for the ones that really have a relationship with the word. Man, look for the people that go to Bible study. See, where do I find them? You're going to find them in Bible study. You're going to find them serving in the ministry. You're going to find them in the word. You're going to find them praying in the morning. You're going to find them not just Instagramming all the fun places they've been to. They're going to they're gonna show them in a prayer meeting. You're going to see them in a conference. You're going to see them. Say, I'm striving with God. I may not be perfect, but I'm striving with God. I'm fighting the good fight of faith. That's where you're going to get your wisdom from. They're striving with God. They're not striving against God. See, when you're striving against God, that brings frustration. That brings defeat. You can't beat God. Your arms are too short to box with God, bro. But when you strive with God, it brings the right kind of success. See, this generation is so impressed by what they hear and easily impressed by personality. But you know what really makes an impact is how people live. It's when you're living in the word, you're living in the word, you're, you're, you're allowing the word to be your guide, the Holy Spirit to be your leader. That brings great fruit in your life. That's what truly makes an impact. And those are chosen. They're experiencing good success in their life. They're experiencing good success in not only one area of their life, but in many areas of their life. Understand that this word 
the Bible says will bring you good success, not in one area, but in many areas. See, people who are chosen, their life speaks a message. Their life says something. I, they have wisdom. And when you look at their life, you can see it in them. You can see it in their life. It flows out of them like a river. Can I hear an amen? They don't even try. It just comes out of them. They, they're not even trying to show off and show out. It's just coming out of them. The Holy Spirit is using them to make an impact. The Holy Spirit is using them to help somebody just by walking, just by living, just like, just by... Just by doing it. Just by doing it. That's where the wisdom is at. See, they walk in territory we desire to walk in. They walk in territory that we desire to walk in. I, I want to tell you, I, I, I'm a chosen vessel. Are you? Who's a chosen vessel? I'm a chosen vessel. And I've been a chosen vessel walking with the Lord for 25 years. And lately, I've been thinking about my life and thinking about where I've come and what I've done. And I want to tell you, I don't just walk in ministry success. I don't just walk in ministry success. I don't just walk leading a big church with a lot of leaders, making a big impact. I don't, that's not my only success. You think that's what I'm all about? I walk as a son. I walk as a spiritual son. I walk as a husband. I've been, a lot of the people we, that we start with, they got married and they ain't married no more. Or they're maybe on the second wife. But I've been walking with the same woman for 22 years. Come on, somebody. I walk as a husband. I walk as a father. Come on, somebody. I walk as a businessman. And I walk as someone who is chosen by God to do not walk in the flesh, but to walk as spiritual, bearing much fruit. I'm a chosen vessel. How about you? Not as many hands. We like to be told we're chosen. We like to claim being chosen. But how are you walking, brother? How are you living, sister? Are you living in a spirit of wisdom? I'm chosen, pastor. I'm a child of God, pastor. But how are you walking? You talk the talk, but do you walk the walk? Well, what about grace? What about grace? Yeah, grace will run out on you, my friend. God is looking for this to be a season of your life where you go to another level of maturity. Come on, somebody. It's time to stop counseling, and it's time to start doing. It's time to stop talking about it, and it's time to start making it. It's time to start breaking through. I tell you, the cream is going to rise to the top. Some of you need to sit down. See, the chosen are the true carriers of the wisdom. So where's the final place where wisdom is attained? Did you guys learn something this morning? The final place, as I bring it in, is wisdom is attained in the well of experience. The well of experience. What is a well? A well is a place where water is stored up. Water is stored up. A well is a place where real ministry can flow. Where real ministry can make an impact. Yeah, people want to be leaders, but you don't got a well. You got a title, but you don't got a well. You got a nice looking Instagram and Facebook, but you don't got a well. You got a nice car, but you don't got a well. Come on, somebody. And if you want to be a leader and you want to make an impact, you, you, you got to understand what a well is. A well is where water is stored up. When the adulterous woman received salvation and was eternally changed and also changed all of Samaria, where did she meet Jesus? She met him at a well. And when she went to the well, she went to get water, but she walked away with wisdom and a new life. <laughs> water couldn't quench her. Jesus said, I've got some water that if I give it to you, you'll never thirst. I've got some wisdom for you that water can't get water can't compare to drugs can't compare to alcohol can't. Co I got some water for you that is full of wisdom. And if you'll drink from my well. 
You won't have to get married a seventh time. You won't have to stay in defeat. You won't have to stay broken. You won't have to stay stuck in that life that you're in. If you drink of the water and the wisdom, oh, come on, somebody. You want to get a little bit deeper? Wherever the Bible talks about water, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So if you really want some wisdom, you're going to drink of the Holy Spirit this morning. You're going to drink of the well because if you want wisdom, you got to visit the well. She thought she was going to get water. But the fact is, she went, to, she went to get water and she came back with some wisdom and a new life. Every effective leader has a well. Every effective leader is digging a well of experience. See, what, what does it mean to have a well? Uh, have a well as a leader is that every time you learn something, every time something comes alive in your life, you, you take that bucket and you go visit the well and you pour it in. And you fill up that well. And then you go back and then you get another, uh, you learn something else and you take it back and you fill it. And you learn something else and you take it back. And you, and you learn something else. And even th- some of you are going to take this word, you're going to go take it to the well. Some of you won't even take it in the car. But you're going to take it in the well and you're going to pour it in. And you're going to check it on YouTube tomorrow morning and make sure that you got it, got it all. And you're going to fill up your well with the word. And you're going to fill up your well. You're going to put some water in your well. But an effective leader doesn't just put water in the well. An effective leader sometimes fails. Sometimes makes mistakes. Sometimes steps out and it doesn't work out the way they plan. So they take the bucket and they go put that experience in the well. Because I want to tell you, sometimes failure is a teacher. If you're striving with God and you're trying to be everything God has called you to be, you're not always going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. You're going to lose sometimes, and there's going to be some negative experiences in your walk with God. But someone who's wise won't blame everybody. They'll just take the bucket and fill up their well. Come on, somebody. And they'll fill up their well with the wins, and they fill up their well with the losses. Watch what happens. Whenever they have a need, they go back to the well. And they draw water from the well. Whenever they're trying to lead somebody, they take that person to the well. Listen, if you you were looking for a leader, man, I hope you're looking for a leader with a well. I I hope you're looking for a leader that's been tested. I hope you're looking for somebody that has made it through some stuff. I hope you're looking for somebody that knows what it is to be up and knows what it is to be down, but they're still here serving God. They're still in the same place. They're still being faithful. Come on. Can I preach to you this morning? I hope you got the right leader because a leader has a well. See, every time they have a need, they go back to the well. See, and when they have a problem... Watch this. Bigger than their well. They go look for somebody that has a bigger well. (laughs) When they got a problem bigger than the well they have, they go to somebody that has a bigger well. Let Let me tell you, man, that's why I got my pastor on speed dial. That's why I have my leaders on my favorites on my phone. I don't want to have to scroll. I want to just be able to hit it. Talk to me, somebody. You think that I'm so proud that I can't still be taught? And I'm still not tapping in. I was on the phone with my pastor last night talking about a situation. Man, I got my leaders on speed dial. And I came to tell you, if you want to be expense, ex, 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 blessed and you want to experience the victory in your life, you can't walk alone. You, you've got to know how to find the well. You've got to go to the well of experience. If you don't have the well and you don't have the experience in your life, find somebody with the experience. Find somebody that has what you need. Tap into a leader. Tap into a pastor. Tap into somebody that is walking in territory that you one day desire to walk. Is this good stuff? You got to tap into the well. The problem is sometimes we try to figure things out all by ourselves. Look for a leader that has a well that's bigger than yours. Now understand that the wise have a well, but the foolish fall into a pit. Wisdom will bring you to the well. How many want to go to the well? How many want to go to the well? Wisdom will bring you to the well, 
But pride, arrogance, and poor character will put you in a pit. And, and I want to talk about pride. I want to talk about the smelly pride. I want to talk about the type of pride of that person. They got so much pride, you could smell it in the other room. Every time everything was real nice, but the minute they showed up, it started to smell different. Because they got pride. Somebody say pride. Let, I want to talk about poor character. I want to talk about people that are always making a bad decision. You know, the Bible says I set before you life and death. They choose death on a daily basis. Poor character. Let me tell you, pride and arrogance and poor character will put you in a pit. If it put Joseph in a pit, it will put you in a pit. But wisdom will take you out of it. I'll tell you, man, as I get ready to close, I've been around some leaders that really throughout the years have thought they had it all together. Even as a young leader, I was around a lot of leaders. I was always trying to learn. And I remember I encountered this, encountered this one woman who, man, she thought she was an expert in missions. I remember one year, Georgina and I, we went on, actually five times in one year, we went to Brazil. And some of you remember when we opened up those children's homes in Brazil, if you're around at that time. Well, we went to Brazil five times that year. My assignment was to be the cameraman, the cameraman, and to take pictures and take video and to serve that way. And I think it was around the third or fourth time that we were going to Brazil. We'd already been there a few times that I got real sick. In fact, I had 101 fever on the plane going in. And Georgina was so gracious. At the time, I don't think we were even married. She was my girlfriend. She took care of me and was really by my side. Even offered to hold my camera. I said, it's OK, babe, I got it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and we went in there. And we didn't stay in a hotel. We stood in the missions quarters. We stood with the men's home. Come on now. And then we got to Brazil. Ooh, boy, it was hot. That's what I love about Georgina, too. She was never always hanging out in the hotel. She was paying the dues, hanging out on the front lines. And we were staying in the home, and she was staying at the children's home or something. And it was hot in Brazil, sweaty, stanky, <laughs> danky. It was just wet. It was just horrible. And I've got this 101 fever. So Pastor and Julie like, like, come on, let's take somebody up at 7 a.m. We're going around all day I'm with this fever. And they say, you all right? Something wrong with you? I go, I'm just not feeling good. You know, and I have this fever. I'm really sick. So for a few days, we're going in. Finally, after we in Sao Paulo for a few days, it's time to go on over to Rio de Janeiro. So some of the people um, got on a plane to fly from Sao Paulo to Rio. And we drove. It was about an eight-hour drive. And they packed me and Georgina, all of our camera equipment, all of our luggage in a VW minibus <laughs> in Brazil with these three women who were expert missionaries. And I wasn't having it. I was, I was, I was thinking about going to the hospital. And so we're in the bus going to Rio. And th the whole trip, they're harping on us. You guys aren't missionaries. You guys don't know how to do ministry. You guys ain't got no, man, we're over here with a fever, over here living in the home, over here doing, and yeah, you guys are just young people. You gang, the gang, you don't have, you don't have what it takes. And she tells you, how many pairs of pants do you have? How many pairs of pants did you bring on the missions trip? She goes, oh, one for every day. <laughs> we were there like 15 days or like 10 days. I don't know. It was a lot. And she goes, how many pairs of pants did you bring? You brought a pair of pants for every single day? You know how many pairs of pants I brought? I brought one pair of jeans. <laughs> and I'm there just laying down in the back of that bus sweating, <laughs> thinking I'm dying, trying not to throw up. For six or eight hours in that bus in the wilderness in the jungles of Brazil, and she's just riding you and you 
Pastor Sonny said that you're not a missionary. And he was telling us that you're not a missionary. And he was telling me all these things. And we're just having to listen to him. I just felt like, saying, you know what, lady, just shut your mouth. <laughs> but I was only saved a couple of years, so I knew you don't talk to your leaders like that. But in my spirit, I wanted to just go back to the flesh for a minute and steal those pants. <laughs> Cut a hole in the bottom. Talk to me, somebody. And for eight hours, they're riding us, these three women. So finally, we get to Brazil in the middle of the night. It's about 10 o'clock at night. We arrive. Everybody there. They're all fresh from the airline flight. We come in on the bus, sick as dogs, <laughs> under abuse from these three women for <laughs> eight hours. And this missionary lady, I won't tell her name because she's still around. <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, how exciting. How exciting to be here at the ranch. It was a ranch. It's so great to be here at the ranch. Come on. You guys are tired. You're tired. Oh, you don't want to go see the ranch. Come on. Get up, sister. Get up, brother. You guys are weak. You can't hang. She gets out. of. Oh, my God. How beautiful. How beautiful. I'm in the back. Get in the camera. Okay, here we go. I got to tape this something. I carry this big old camera. And she's, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's walking around of the, the ranch in the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden, you hear a scream, ah, blood-curdling scream. And she fell into a pit. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. It wasn't an ordinary pit. It was a septic tank. as she was up to her chin in human feces. And I got that camera as fast as I could, and I said, I got to get this on video. What does the Bible say? Pride comes before fall. Arrogance will get you in a pit. Poor character will put you in a pit. But God is raising up a people of wisdom here at Victory Outreach San Diego. Come on up. Woo! Someone with wisdom showed up and pull her out of the pit. I'll tell you, it wasn't me. I walked up to that pit and the fumes, I, I was like, oh my God. I, I never smelled nothing like that. It smelled like the pits of hell. But someone with wisdom and courage and maturity pulled that lady out. And then they threw her in the shower. And they got all kinds of tomato juice and started throwing tomato cans on her and all kinds of stuff. And then someone with wisdom, Pastor Miller, said, does anybody got any extra pants? This is a true story. And Georgina goes, I brought a pair of pants for every single... Come on, Victory Outreach. We're going to walk in wisdom we're gonna walk in wisdom <laughs> thank god Eugenia was hanging out at the gap come on somebody wise woman you can stand wise woman someone say wisdom someone say wisdom builds a house and I'll tell you wisdom is gonna pull you out of that pit you're in right now Maybe your whole family's in a pit. But someone's got to get out first. Someone's got to be humble enough to say, I got to get out of this pit, and the only way out is wisdom. The wisdom of the word. Not just hearing it, but doing it. The wisdom of walking with the chosen. Touch your neighbor and say, let me walk with you. Let me walk with you. Let me walk with you, man. And then lastly, 
the well of experience. The well of experience. Don't be a fool. Don't fight us. Don't fight the word. Don't fight the people with experience. Don't fight the people that have been through it. Don't fight God. Strive with God. Make a commitment that you're going to change. Make a commitment that you're going to start attending life group. Make a commitment that you're going to serve God and you're going to plant yourself in the house of God and you're going to root in the house of God. And if you do that, you'll come out of that pit real quick. In fact, we'll pull you out. We're pulling you out right now. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for those of you that say, Pastor, that, that message I believe was for me, for my family, for my loved ones. And I determined that I'm not just going to walk with Jesus. I'm going to walk with wisdom. I'm ready to come. And if that word was for you, I want you to be bold and ashamed. Maybe you're a leader and your well is empty. See, I'm going to fill up that well. Then I want you to come on up to this altar right now, and I want you to talk to God. Come on from all over this place. Come on up and make this altar call. Make this altar call. Make this altar call right now. Come. Put your pride down. says ask for wisdom and you shall receive it ask for wisdom and you shall receive it you shall receive it say Lord I need wisdom in my life I need to lay a foundation of wisdom Lord I'm gonna I'm gonna read your word I'm gonna let your word change me once and for all let your word change me once and for all let your word come alive I'm gonna develop a relationship with your word Lord, I'm going to determine to walk with those that are chosen. Those that are chosen. Those that are living it out. Those that are walking in spirit and in truth. Those that know how to worship. Those that know how to serve. I'm not going to look at their motives. I'm going to look at their fruit this morning. Father, give me a mentor. Give me a leader. Give me somebody that can truly submit to and learn from and grow under. Father, give me a spiritual father here on earth that will speak into my life. Give me someone wise, God. Surround me with wise men, wise women. Lord, I rebuke the fools in my life. I reject the fools in my life. I push them out and I bring the wisdom in. I push out the fools and bring in the wisdom. Bring in the wise. Bring in the wise.
to ask him for that wisdom to raise your family, to be that husband, to be that son, to be that daughter. Ask God for wisdom to live your life. Ask God right now by faith. Don't doubt. God can do it. God can give it to you. Lord, we ask you right now. We ask you again for that wisdom. Fill our minds. Fill our hearts. One more time. Let's go ahead and pray. And let's ask God for wisdom. If you need wisdom in this place, ask God and he will give it to you. Ask by faith. By wisdom, a house is built. Let's build our houses right now. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we come before your mighty name. Lord, what a powerful word, my God. Lord, let us take this word, my God, and practice it, Father. Practice it every day of our life, my God. That we ask you for wisdom. Wisdom in the, the decisions that we make. Wisdom in the decisions that cross our path, my God. Lord, we come in, in everything, God, and we ask for wisdom. Wisdom in our marriages. Wisdom in our homes. Wisdom with our families. Wisdom as a single person. We ask for wisdom, my God. And Lord, you give freely. We pray right now. We thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we all say, amen. Go ahead and put your hands together if you're getting some wisdom. If God is blessing you with some wisdom, if you have the victory in the... Come on, I want you to put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Just stay right there. We'll dismiss from right there. You know, that was a powerful word. How many got something out of that? How many are going to apply that word? Come on, I want you to put your hands together, amen. You know, in a few moments we're getting ready for our next service, but I want you to...